From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to a Cube Conversation. I'm coming to you from the Cube's East Coast studio offices and joining me is one of our Cube alums from the earliest Cube event that we ever did. He's also one of our guest hosts, a longtime friend of the program, someone I've known for a long time, John Troyer, the Chief Reckoner at Tech Reckoning. John, so good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Stu, thanks for having me on. Uh, dialing in here from sunny Half Moon Bay, California. All right. Well, John, you know, first of all, it, it's been good to talk to you a bunch. You know, normally uh, we would be seeing you at a number of the conferences, of course, with today's global pandemic. Uh, it stopped us seeing in person. But I, I tell you, a month ago, you held the Influencer Marketing Council, and it was one of those weeks where it was just kind of everything's changing, the world is upside down, and it was just so nice to talk to, you know, so many of our peers in the community, the people that we've known for a long time, and just, you know, commiserate a little bit at first, and then, you know, all share as to how we're moving forward and what we're doing. So you know, bring us up to speed as to, you know, what you're seeing out there in the community. Sure, sure. Well, let's see. I mean, that's one of the ironies of, of the place we're at here, right? We're learning that connection is so important. We know it is, but we tend to lump it in together with conferences and with sales calls and seminars, webinars. And we're learning that this kind of, kind of connection, these relationships uh, are what we as humans are built on and also what business is built on. Business is built of relationships. So I work a lot with uh, companies doing work with their practitioner communities, with advocacy, customer advocacy, partner advocacy, with influencers outside their ecosystem these kind of relationship based ways to get attention and ways to fill the, you know, the funnel. And, um, you know, they've really kind of been both pulled apart and, and, and put center stage on this current with our current pandemic. Yeah, it, it's interesting because you think about like, you know, what was online before and there and a lot of communities. You think about, you know, the forums there, the way you communicate, um, you know, lots of online things. Sure, meetups are a huge part of what goes on and those big events that, that you get together. So is there anything you've seen that's drastically changed? Obviously, from an event standpoint, you know, we'll, we'll spend some time talking about virtual events uh, and, and the like. But, you know, influencer groups, uh, the, you know, kind of V experts and MVPs of the world, uh, you know, has there been any immediate impact uh, on those groups? Well, sure. I mean, the, the, a lot of times there are, like you said, there is a component of offline as well as online to these programs. I mean, going back to the vendor side, the org charts are, are always confused in the first place. Does this belong in digital? Does this belong somewhere else? But the best programs always have face-to-face -face meetings. And of course, those are off the table now. So that, that, that really kind of levels the playing field in a certain way. You still have people at home. The people who are working are working harder than ever. A lot of layoffs in the industry. So those people are kind of uh, either you know, trying to cope. Some of them are have time for more creative outlets. So we're seeing a resurgence in people making content and discussions and online forums and online discussion. So that's really interesting. A lot of- John, uh, John, John sourdough bread, you forgot the sourdough bread. <laughs> making sourdough bread. I made some this morning. It was pretty good. You know, the nice thing is it levels the playing field, right? Whether you're in Croatia or Cleveland or, or you know, the middle of Silicon Valley, you can start to attend these things. I mean, I know some folks who were saying, you know, I, I was hampered by attending meetups because I, you know, I have a family or I have childcare or I have job duties, and now they're able to attend virtually. So even if they, even if it's in a different city, so in some ways this is a great leveler. This this allows us everyone to participate to the level of their interest and their energy, you know. But there are downsides. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. One of the questions there were always the people like, oh, I'm feeling left out because I'm not at that event. Well you know, absolutely, you mentioned, you know, the home strains are there. And, you know, if you had a family can, to, a, a situation that might have kept you from traveling, well, chances are you probably have some family things that might not free you up to be able to spend, you know, multiple hours doing things, but it, it shifts it and it does level the playing field. So, right, you know, whether I'm sitting in Bangalore, India, you know, somewhere in Croatia or, you know, in Silicon Valley, uh, they're all sitting at home right now and, you know, all looking through their webcams and, uh, to, and talking through the internet. So, um, sounds like right there. there I'm, I'm curious if you think there will be lessons learned and it is early days, of course. But one of the questions we say is, you know, what will we have as a takeaway from there and what will be permanent um, when we talk about, say, communities and how we engage mm -hmm. with them? Well, the whole kind of community developer relations space is, is always a little bit uh, 
it's it's a little bit aside from revenue producing, right? So it's not quite straight marketing. It's not really revenue producing. So it, there's always a tension there in the in the tech community. The folks that are connected to their business, the folks that are have developed relationships and have that already created asset of these of these existing relationships are doing well, especially if they're connected back to their business. Because this is a time to to make those connections, to retrench. My family is talking a lot more, and your ecosystem, your tech family, should be talking a lot more. Your customers and partners. So those folks are doing well. We've also seen a lot of layoffs because these are seen in some companies as non essential or as non just non-productive and if I got to cut something, you know, the community team goes, if it's not strategically connected to, uh, you know, back to back to the business. So I think one of the lessons is those relationships in a time like this are, are strategically important. And I mean, we can drill down on that, but I think that's going to be one of the takeaways that the companies that have built these networks and built their strong ecosystems are going to come out the winners here. I, I mean, John, you brought up a big point here. Uh, as we speak right now, I think the number in the U.S. is over the last five weeks, it's about 30 million people uh, that are out of a job. Those are staggering numbers. I mean, it had been decades, you know, there was never a million of new unemployed here and 30 million just, you know, does boggle the mind. Um, then you have companies like Amazon that have hired 170,000 people and it's not just the manufacturing, uh, you know, and the, uh, in, in the distribution of things. I've seen people get hired by AWS uh, during these times, but it, it is, uh, you know, it feels that there's a little bit of thawing on, on some of the movement. Uh, some people that had had jobs frozen uh, a month ago now seem that they are now moving through the system again there. But absolutely, the financial ripples of what's happening here are something that is going to be with us for many quarters going forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the other lessons that we'll learn is the nature of events, right? We have uh, we were in event overload. The cube is a, a witness to that. You're on the road many many weeks a year. In fact, you have to you have to clone yourself. You're, you, there's so many. You have multiple teams out on the road during during conference season. And a lot of people were saying, "There's too much. I can't get. There's, there's just too many events. I can't go to them all. I can't even pay attention to them." Well, now we're trying to take all those events. And, and squirt them through the tiny pinhole of, of a digital experience and uh, Twitter and Facebook and video like this. You had a multi-channel, very rich interactive experience. You could get somebody to commit and get away from their, uh, their house uh, for a few days and pay attention. We're beginning, I think, to rethink what this, how this marketing playbook works, right? The yeah. digital event is from, is, has many different roles. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. John, uh, I, I've been asking for a few years to dial down some of my travel. I didn't ask for it to go to zero. Um, so I'd be careful what you wish for out there. But, you know, good. You know, I'm glad you brought up the, you know, virtual events, digital events, whatever you want to call them. Um, we know as an industry that there is work to be done to make them better. Uh, you were just an interruption or a mouse click away from being pulled away um, from this online environment. And everyone is learning as we go. We've been spending a lot of time working with companies, trying to learn lessons, trying to, you know, ask the questions about what is critically important. And, you know, engagement, it's tough. You know, we know community, John, is something that isn't that you just stand it up. It is constant care and feeding. And when an event's going on, community is a piece of that thing. Um, and, you know, how do we maintain that in a virtual world? So anything you've seen that you like or things that you'd like to see more when it comes to, you know, how do we make things engaging and how do you make people feel welcomed and part of it rather than just um, watching something on the web and streaming content at me? I think there's a few things. One is we're blowing the digital experience apart, right? There, there are multiple jobs to be done. There are multiple audiences. I went to a big conference today. I'm not a practitioner for this particular tech company. I'm not interested in all the breakouts. I am interested in the keynotes and I would be interested in some networking. So a large part of kind of community developer relationship, all these this relationship building happens during and after their dinners and, and receptions and things like that. So you can replace that and it doesn't have to be, you know, right after the big keynote. So we're, we're breaking these things apart. I see people, I've talked to different vendors, breaking big events into a series of smaller events, breaking it into audiences and executive series of events, a practitioner series of events. And then I think, frankly, the, the produced thing, the produced component of the show uh, can can use an upgrade too. I mean, I I'm looking at the way our TV talk shows have adapted over the last month or two, and they all started off with like a crappy webcam or a, or an iPhone, and now the, many of them are, have a very interesting format that have adapted to their hosts and their guests being 
both at home and separate. So, you know, that there's a there's a psychological through comfort level and through line to having an anchor, to having a host, uh, things like that, that maybe isn't necessary when you're you're, you're 5,000 people in an auditorium uh, and clapping. It's, it's just a different feeling. So John, are we calling to see, you know, which executive has a child that can help with some hand-drawn uh, slides and things that they can put up there? Uh, you, you never know. That, that's Could been be ironic interesting, but... Many people have commented that they like the evening news now when the, when the kids and the wife and the dog and the, and the husband interrupt, right? It's, it, it's humanizing. And frankly, that's my, that's my business. And that's what I help companies do is, is humanize themselves and and, and the, the, you know you can sprinkle a little bit in. I mean, we'll get tired of the kids hand drawn stuff, you know, if we're in if we're stay at home for too many more months. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of wonder enterprise sales is that the message we want going through when we want you to do you know a subscription that will be millions of dollars a year um, that there's a hand drawn thing. So a little bit of a gap between the enterprise. Uh, and uh, you know what they might say, but you br bring up a really good point, right, John? That that experience, uh, personalizing it, absolutely is something that can be done. Uh, you know, one of the things we've been talking to all our clients about is you don't just take a physical event and lift it onto some you know website and think that you know you're going to have some success. That you need to think about that audience, focus on what they do. You know, we're always, of course, focusing on the cube. Is you know we want really good com uh, content and you know real conversations with people. And you know, you brought up right that that interaction that I get at shows. How much can I make people feel that I've talked to people? Um, you should be able to get more, you know, executive access. Uh, and if you're a customer, you know, I, I've heard some good things. It's like, hey, you want to break out and talk to an SE, you know, live on uh, a chat. The, the, the platforms can enable that sort of thing. So, you know, you, you want to be able to talk. You want to be able to make it personal down to small groups or even individuals. Um, and there is the opportunity to do that. Yeah. A lot of times people talk about the hallway track. Yeah. But you got to realize the hallway track is not the same for everybody. If you have uh, gone to the same conference for 10 years and you know a lot of the people and see familiar faces, the hallway track is great. You run into people. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Uh, and that's when the real work gets done. Uh, but if you are a newcomer to an ecosystem, if you're a new prospect coming in here, uh, even if I provided you the same virtual hallway track, it's, it's not going to work for you. So again, we come back to the companies that have established these relationships who have uh, built these, uh, you know, have, have these onboarding experiences now uh, are gonna be the winners. If, if you just have a bunch of strangers, I mean, you might as well just do an hour webinar and, and, and see who you can spam, you know, get your get your internal sales to, to call everybody the next day. Right, I, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking of, you know, the blogger lounge at VMworld where, you know, you and I go and we know lots of people, but we also meet lots of new people because they show up and everybody is like, hey, you need to meet all of these other people. So you're, you're right, there's ways to be able to take those influencers and those people to help concierge, help make connections um, and do those things. A couple of real straightforward tips though. Single track things work really well for those scale events because you can just drop in, you know exactly what's live. Multi-track, very much harder to figure out what's going on live. I know it's live. The other thing I've seen from a lot of uh, tech community events is an accompanying Slack. Uh, with pre-recorded talks and with the speaker then in different Slack channels. The speaker's there, you can chit chat while it's live. Uh, so it's Slack or any kind of chat, uh, but Slack, you know, if you're already in this community Slack, that works really well. So this kind of dual multi-channel live interaction, I think can be one of the things that works right away. Yeah, absolutely. You know, little little plug that's similar to what we'll have for DockerCon. So on the, on the content tracks, uh, you know, most of them, I believe, will be, you know, recorded ahead of time. So those experts, you'll actually be able to ask questions. They'll be interacting in real time. Uh, you know, whether you like it threaded or unthreaded, there's there's options that we're, we're choosing on that kind of stuff. All right, uh, John, want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, obviously we're, we're kind of in the middle of things here. You know, it, it feels like we're in the new abnormal if it were, but you know, right here at the end of April, just about into May, some states are opening up. We don't know when we'll be able to go from 10 people to 25 to 50 or more people. So, you know, try, trying to understand some of those pieces. Uh, what, what are you looking for going forward? Uh, any last tips you want to give the community? Well, I think I think we're in I think we're in kind of in here for a long haul, at least before we bring 80,000, 100,000 people together from all over the world. So, you know, the old saw is, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The best the next, second best time is today. 
you 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 figure out what your metrics are. They're not going to be the same as the old metrics. You figure out what your your audiences are looking for. What's in it for them? Do they want training? Do they want networking? And you start to deliver it to them. And you and you iterate. None of us look. Community people and, and, and developer relations people aren't experts at digital marketing. Event people aren't experts at digital marketing. In fact, the old the digital marketing people aren't experts at digital marketing in this context. So we're all learning, and and you know it's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of money spent, and we'll figure it out eventually. Uh, you know, I think over the course of this year. Yeah, absolutely. It's the the learning mindset is what we all need. Uh, the the things that have you know brought my spirits up the most are the communities engaging. Uh, whether it's working on the pandemic or just you know sharing what they've seen, what they'd like to do better, uh, that collaboration has been uh, something really good to see. All right, John Troyer, great to see you as always. Uh, look forward to uh, talking much more with you in the future. And uh, thanks again. Thanks for having me, Stu. Stay safe. All right, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks as always for joining us and watching the Cube.